good afternoon. This is Hounduck Steve wishing you a very pleasant afternoon. I hope this finds you all well. And uh, this is my first try out with the brand new camera. So I'm hoping that that uh, is going to prove satisfactorily. And uh, I just thought I would give you a quick update. But first, I must thank Anne Elizabeth for the donation. That is much appreciated. Thank you so very, very kindly. And uh, blessings out to all of you. Uh, who have sent uh, uh, those very kind donations so far. And, um, wow, here we go. Here's the update on my hand. Uh, the cast is off, and you might think that that would be a good thing. But in this case, uh, I went to see the doctor last Thursday, and um, I saw the x-rays, and yes, it's not a very good break. Uh, it's, not, it's clean, uh, but the bones have misaligned. So I have to go down next week and have some surgery done on this to align the bones. They're going to uh, drill a hole, two holes actually, at either side of the knuckle, and insert two pins in there, which will stay in for six weeks. Um, I'll be in a cast from there on in. And so, uh, yeah, my six weeks of penance starts sometime next week. So it is going to be very, very trying indeed. And um, yes, I put a call out to some friends. I'm going to be pulling in a few favours. Um, not not big ones, I just need a little bit of digging done. Uh, I, I will be able to do some stuff with my left hand, of course. But um, uh, yeah, just some of that kind of where you need both hands to do stuff. I think I'm just going to need a little help with. So uh, anyone that is within earshot, you may get a phone call. And I'll thank you in advance for any help that I receive. But the interesting thing was that I wanted to uh, talk about in this update was my visit to the hospital. Now, this is Peterborough Regional Hospital. Uh, it's a pretty big hospital. It serves the entire Peterborough County region. And um, so well, I've been there once or twice before. Always a problem getting parking in the Peterborough Regional uh, Hospital. And uh, this time, no problem at all. The parking lot was about half full. And I'm walking up to the main entrance because all other entrances are sealed off now. You can only go through the one entrance. And of course, you know, there is a bevy of nurses all puffing their faces off uh, on, on a tea break or coffee break and, uh, you know, protecting their health. I always find that kind of interesting. The little chin uh, strap on there are ready to pop up over their nose at a moment's notice. Anyway, I get to the front entrance and like there's this army of security. There's like three or four security guards, two either side of the door, two milling around. There are two people in hazmat suits standing behind a desk, uh, uh, disinfecting people's hands. Uh, and they ask us why you're there. You go through one set of double doors. There is a person uh, fully masked and another security guard in that hallway, sort of, it's like between two sets of doors. And uh, I don't know whether she's a nurse or a worker, but she asks you a whole bunch of questions, but she's so masked up. And of course, she's so well versed on these questions. It sounds like, well, of course, you know, you're going to answer no to everything, even if you don't really understand the question. Go through the next set of double doors. There is a security box with a security guard sitting in there, surrounded by plexiglass. Uh, I'm directed to a registration area where there are three booths, plexiglass, and a little hiagraphone, like a little speaker that you speak into, and uh, do my registration. On to another booth, uh, where I get a, a, um, a wrist band to identify me, in case I should collapse in the, when I'm in the hospital. Um, the, there's only one other person I saw and she went through as I was coming in. There's nobody behind me. Uh, I walk through down to the um, outpatient's medical area. I see one other member of the public, everyone else's staff, cleaning staff, nurses. Uh, I was early because um, I thought there would be a lineup. You never quite know what's going to happen with an appointment like this. And... Um, Nobody there. The doctor came bouncing out of the room and uh, I was in right away without any delay. Sat down, uh, he took a look at the situation, showed me the x-rays, so on and so forth. And uh, then we had like a 20 minute conversation about Bitcoin, uh, which he was extremely interested in. And uh, so, yeah, as I didn't see the rest of the hospital, but the security at the front from the 
people, the pub, members of the public that I saw roaming around uh, the, the main entrance and the outpatient's medical area, it didn't warrant it at all. It, it was overkill to the nth degree. And um, it was just, it was a sight to behold. It was a sight to behold. Anyway, it is, this whole episode is a grim reminder of how vulnerable we are to I mean, like this is just a little bone just a little bone and uh, imagine if i couldn't get to that doctor to reset it uh, he said that if it's set the way it is um my fingers would bend to uh, the right and uh, actually well, you, you can't see because this is a an elastic bandage and a, a sort of splint under here to hold it steady but when i take this off to have a shower uh, my fingers are already bending uh, down this way like this thing this finger should be up here like this and uh, he said that's what happens you break a bone and everything's connected to everything else in there and uh, so yes everything's very awkward um getting dressed at least i can get showered um i go in next to tuesday morning for a pedicure um haven't had one of those in quite a while but of course i can't clip my toenails with my left hand so um Yes, life is going to be very awkward for the next little while. And so, uh, what else can you do? I will be paying attention to the news. It's, it's kind of hard to report on things right now because things are changing so much. I mean, how can you have an opinion? I mean, look, uh, just one example. Elon Musk uh, trying to buy out Twitter. You know, at first he buys a little under 10% of the shares. Then he's going to sit on the board. Then he's not going to sit on the board. Then he makes an offer for the whole company. Then the SEC decides to hold him up on um, some kind of trading irregularities as far as buying the Twitter shares is concerned. Uh, Twitter adopts a poison pill. I mean, how can you keep up? I could have made 10, 15, 10 videos out of that one uh, issue and been wrong on each one because who could have seen what was coming next? You know, it was going to be a simple thing. Um, Elon Musk would have um, was a majority shareholder and he was going to reestablish free speech on Twitter and reinstate some of those people who have been blocked. And all of a sudden, and this is a, actually, this is an interesting example of how um, these globalists will eat their own. If you go against the narrative it doesn't matter. So, you know, you might have thought, oh, well, President Trump deserved to have his Twitter account, account blocked. But you watch, they'll, they'll try and block uh, Elon Musk's Twitter account to silence him, to shut him down. You know, they're already coming out and saying, well, you know, he's too rich to be owning a platform and he's going to control the narrative and blah, 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 blah. Well, what about Jeff Bezos? You know, what about Branson uh, and, and um, Virgin Phones and all of this kind of thing? You know, I mean, you, that we're, we're already there. You know, first it's okay, and when Elon Musk was uh, bought all of these shares, oh yeah, well that's fine. You know, it's just been, now he wants to buy the. Oh no, no, allow free speech. You see, this is the. This is the frustrating thing about all of this is the people who are trying to advocate inclusiveness and free speech are the ones who are moderating free speech and deciding what bullying is, what hate speech is. Um, and of course, you know, the eye of the needle gets finer and finer as you go down this path. Pretty soon, you just have to flick your eyes the wrong way at somebody and they will be offended. They'll go to some kind of safe space and you'll be blocked forever. <laughs> that's Honestly, that's where we're going. It, it, it is so insane out there right now. It is impossible to keep up with. And um, so there are one or two things that I would like to discuss. Um, I'm certainly following Elon Musk. And of course, I'm closely following the French election between uh, Macron and Marine Le Pen. And um, it, it's looking like Macron uh, will take it uh, just because every single party, just about uh, one, when they lost, when they went to the runoff, uh, they told their voters to vote for Macron. Now, it will just depend on how dissatisfied and disaffected the electorate are. Uh, there is a chance that Marine Le Pen could win, and uh, that would be a very, very interesting outcome. Marine Le Pen wants to pull France out of uh, NATO and have a much more reduced role, uh, and she also wants to have a Frexit. And if France has a Frexit, uh, as Britain had Brexit, uh, I think you will see uh, that the EU will just crumble. So Britain, France and Germany were the three major countries 
in the EU. And if France goes, Britain goes, you know, all of a sudden I see Germany and Austria going, well, you know, those sanctions against Russia, maybe, maybe we should over, over, poke, 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 but, you know, maybe we shouldn't go through with the, uh, because they're short of gas now. And I'm sure that their phones are ringing off the hook, you know, from Audi and Mercedes and Volkswagen and Siemens and all of those, you know, massive engineering companies that reside in Germany uh, going, what the hell are you doing? You're going to cut us back to 50% of our natural gas, our energy supply? You must be nuts. Get off your ass and do so. Yeah, there's, there's trouble brewing here. And it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. It's, you know, it's affecting over here in Canada, of course. Um, diesel is a buck ninety nine a litre. And it stayed that way for the last, oh, what would I say, about at least the last month. And um, so it's looking like it'll go into the summer uh, period. Usually it drops after heating season. It comes down, but not this year, apparently. So we'll see how all this plays out this summer. And um, food inflation, I'm, I'm just hearing all kinds of warnings. Uh, certainly my grocery bill has gone through the roof. I don't know about, well, I'm sure yours has too. Uh, you obviously buy very similar things to the things I buy. And um, so that is going to be a shocker. It's going to be hard on restaurants because restaurants' two main inputs are food and energy. And of course, the people that they depend on are also struggling with their own uh, expenses going up through the roof and of course we haven't seen the effect this is going to have on municipalities and property tax because the municipalities fuel bill just doubled and all their employees fuel bill just doubled and so uh, you know this it takes a little while for this stuff to reach its fingers through the economy this is why I always advise people to you know take on a longer uh, thought process here think in terms of decades um, you know, we're just starting to feel the effects of the damage done to the uh, supply chains from the first year of lockdowns. That's only now starting to bang through our entire system. Uh, I mean, some were obviously felt uh, quite quickly, but we're now seeing the bulk of the effects where, you know, the, the parts that go to a truck repair place that didn't come in so they couldn't repair the trucks that was going to pick up the parts to bring the parts to the truck repair place. You know, you, 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 you see that kind of thing going on, right? So uh, that is now starting to take effect. The spares have been used up. Any, any inventory has been used up. And uh, now we're in the real world. Now we're really going to find out what the delays are and the sort of um, shortage inflation, scarcity inflation we're going to see. I mean, I think that could be the biggest thing. You know, I understand that new cars are now selling for 5% over list. I mean, normally you could expect uh, to get at least, uh, you know, a 5% uh, discount if you negotiated hard with the seller of the car. Okay, but now they're so scarce because they can't get those semiconductors. And uh, for the sake of a nail, a shoe was lost. And for the sake of a shoe, a horse was lost, etc., etc. So there you go. There's lots of stuff going on, uh, but it's all dynamic. It's all in the process of working its way out. Uh, so I'm basically going to be reporting on things uh, more than I find interesting than anything else. And... Um, Yes, I may even do one or two little rants about uh, having to clump around in a full cast. And one thing that I never realised, I've seen lots of people with casts on, when they took that thing off, I'm going like, what? what is that weird smell between your fingers? Of course, it sweats, it doesn't get washed away, there's no way to clean it, and um, yeah, it has a, a, a kind of weird, odd odour. So, yeah. <laughs> that was that was one of the little surprises and I didn't realize of course uh, just incapacitating my hand for that short period of time uh, like it's taken a little while to get my fingers moving around again and that sort of thing so uh, anyway we'll keep you posted on that and uh, we will do a little walk around the garden once I get things further ahead right now it's kind of damp and dreary and uh, dismal Cloudy, rain on and off, three degrees today, uh, very little incentive to get out there and actually try and do something outside. Okie dokie, well in the meantime this is Hound Dog Steve signing off, wishing you a very pleasant afternoon. Please like, share and comment below and in the meantime we'll talk very very shortly. See you now, take care, bye.